Welcome to Episode 5 of Live It Out with the Planning Woman. I'm your host, Jennifer Booth. Today I want to share with you an important principle I've learned about time management. And that is, in order to manage our time well, we need to develop good habits that will help us make the most of our time. Whether you realize it or not, life consists of many habits. This applies no matter how flexible or complex your life may be. Some habits are positive and lead to good health, a productive life, and thriving relationships. Other habits, though, do just the opposite. They lead to poor health, an unproductive life, and strained relationships. We all get into routines made up of habits that are sometimes chosen consciously. However, many times our actions become habits when we don't even realize it. For example, one time I got into the habit of eating a protein bar with my mid-morning coffee. I'm not sure how this started, but before I even realized it, as soon as I smelled my coffee brewing, I instantly reached for the protein bar. It's not that I was hungry at that time. It just became a habit. I soon figured out, though, that this habit was not a healthy one for me. In fact, I didn't need the protein bar, and there were several other healthier options available to me that I could choose from. Once I realized this, I quit eating the protein bar with my coffee. Now I have extra calories throughout the day that I can use on healthier choices such as fruit or raw veggies. While I have been writing over the years through my blog on theplanningwoman.com, I have come across several powerful habits. That's not to say that I have put them all into practice, but I have tried to implement them the best I can. So today I want to share with you five of those habits that have the power to change your life. And these are ones that um, I have been able to adopt for the most part, or I am working on, and I have seen lots of uh, fruit from my efforts, a lot of benefits in my life from adopting these habits. So hopefully you can find one or two here that you would like to try out to help make your life more productive and more meaningful. The first powerful habit is to avoid the trap of procrastination. When our schedules become overwhelming, it's tempting to put off doing certain tasks. The problem with this is it eventually becomes a habit that leads us down the road to an unproductive life. Avoiding the trap of procrastination is also a habit. We have to choose to do what is on our to-do list instead of ignoring it. Think of it this way. If a task is so important that it rates a spot on your to-do list, then it is imperative we complete that task. Ask yourself why you are putting off certain tasks. You just may discover that those tasks are not really relevant at the moment, or they may be delegated to someone else who could do them better. I've discovered, though, that one reason I tend to procrastinate doing certain tasks is because I'm a perfectionist. Through reading the book, Time Management from the Inside Out by Julie Morgenstern, I began to realize why I put off different tasks. This book was life-changing for me because she talked about the mental aspects of time management. She listed several psychological obstacles that keep us from managing our time well, and one of those obstacles is the need for perfection. Julie says, Perfectionists feel compelled to do everything at the same level of excellence. Many adopt the attitude, well, if I can't do this perfectly, I'm not going to do it at all. The need for perfection comes out of the need for approval. It could also come from a fear of criticism, humiliation, or harsh judgment. Maybe the perfectionist mantra was drummed into your head as a kid and you never learned how to evaluate which tasks were worth your very best effort, and which ones weren't. Or it could be that you feel more secure when everything seems to be under your control. 
When I read this, something finally clicked in my mind that made me realize a lot of my procrastination habits were rooted in perfection. I realized I really wanted to do everything perfectly, and when I knew I couldn't, I would dread the task and put it off. I don't know about you, but as a wife, mother, and caretaker of my home, I am constantly hit by the enemy in this area. When I don't do the things I know I need to do to take care of my family, I feel like a huge failure. And to be honest, there are seasons in my life where this is almost an everyday thing for me. The best way I know to battle procrastination is just to start. I know it sounds simple, but working on a task for a minimum of 15 minutes is usually all it takes to get me motivated to complete it. I'm also motivated by the Proverbs 31 woman. In Proverbs 31 verse 27, it says, She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat of the bread of idleness. I want to be like this woman. I want to take care of my family in the way I know God intended. So if you are caught in that procrastination trap like I have been many times, I encourage you to ask God to help you accomplish the tasks that need to be done. Okay, the second powerful habit that I have been trying to cultivate in my life is to make the most out of small pockets of time. We all have random time throughout the day that tends to be wasted. You know, like 15 minutes waiting to pick up kids or 20 minutes waiting at the doctor's office. And if you're like me, you might even have one or two hours of unscheduled time during your day that ends up being unproductive because you just really don't know what to do during that time. You don't have a plan for it. So developing the habit of making the most out of these small pockets of time can help really increase your productivity and to, um, to get things done that are necessary or things that you just want to get done. And one way to do that is to help, um, to help do that is by keeping a running list of things you can do when you have a spare minute here and there. So let me share just a few things that I'm working on right now in regards to making the most out of small pockets of time. The first is to take note of times when you're waiting. These could be uh, times like waiting in the pickup line at school, at the doctor's office, or at the mechanic shop while getting your car fixed. Plan ahead by taking a book you've been wanting to read, work you can complete on your computer there, or if you have paperwork to do, or even take magazines or catalogs that you need to look at before recycling. These times of waiting are also great opportunities to get small tasks completed. You can use this time to return emails, text, or catch up on social media. Planning ahead or brain dumping are also great activities to do while you're waiting. The second thing I've been trying to do to make the most of small pockets of time is to identify wasted time. I discovered a while back, um, well, especially when I was working a few days a week at my church. I'm only doing that on Mondays now, but um, the same thing can still happen if I, if I let it. But I, I realized that I had gotten into the habit of spending about an hour to an hour and a half in the afternoons after work, reading the paper and catching up on social media. The days that I don't go into work, I usually get the newspaper read first thing in the morning, and I really try to stay off of social media as much as I can early on. But during these times in the afternoon, I realized that I can make better use of that time by doing tasks around the home, um, chores that need to be done, whether it was cleaning or um, decluttering or picking up or whatever or I could be exercising or doing something more productive than just reading the paper and catching up on social media, especially for an hour to an hour and a half. And before I identified this waste of time, I felt like it was hard for me to fit those cleaning, home chores, and exercising, all of that into my schedule. And while I'm not totally on a roll with all of that yet, I am making progress, but I'm also able to realize that that hour to hour and a half in the afternoon, while I need part of that to decompress after work, it really is a golden time for me to get some things done. Um, 
even if it is just beginning to get dinner ready or to be thinking about dinner or what we're going to be doing that evening, just making the most of that time and not wasting it is was my goal when I realized that I was really kind of wasting that time. And another area that I realized I was wasting time in is the hours between dinner and bedtime. I usually have about two to two and a half hours during this time. By the time we get done with dinner and the time um, I try to start my evening routine. And once again, I was on my phone or computer catching up on social media while watching TV. And, uh, you know, often though, my husband and I usually talk during this time too. So that time is not totally wasted. But I felt that there, there has to be more that I could get done during that time to be productive and not just sit there and veg out in front of the TV. So after talking to my husband to see if this would bother him, because he's sitting there watching TV or maybe he's doing work or he's trying to talk to me, I just decided to use some of that time to work on my business, whether it's brainstorming blog posts or coming up with podcast topics or writing a podcast script or a blog post, whatever. Um, if I can spend even just an hour a night on that, that helps me to get further ahead in my business and it's not wasting time. Now, as I talked about in a previous episode about Sabbath, Sabbath rest, taking time to rest, we do need to take time to rest each day. And I don't think rest is a waste of time, but I don't think we need two or three hours of rest each day. That's what sleep is for at night. And um, I think that we should just try to make the most of our waking hours when possible. Okay, and a third thing that I'm doing to help me make the most out of small talk pockets of time is following the two minute rule and take five. So once you've identified your waiting times and the wasted time, you can begin to think about what tasks or activities you can take on during those times. And one of my favorite ways to make the most of small pockets of time is by using the two minute rule. Any activity or task that can be accomplished in two minutes or less should be taken care of right away. If you put these small tasks off, you risk accumulating a huge list of tasks and won't be able to take care of them all. I also think about tasks that take just five minutes to complete. It may help to create a list of five minute tasks, so when you find yourself with a few minutes to spare, you can refer to that list and do one of the tasks. You can also do this with 15 minute task increments also. All right, a third powerful habit that I have been cultivating is keeping a gratitude journal. And this has been one of the most powerful habits I've developed over the last couple of years. Um, at the end of 2016, I realized that my grumpy attitude was holding me back from achieving some of the goals that I set for myself. So in January of 2017, I started a simple gratitude journal. And each night before I go to bed, I write down at least three things for which I am grateful. And after a year and a half, I am now up to 2,236 entries. Obviously that means I've listed more than three things on some days, but that's where the power of this habit kicks in. Once you start listing things, you begin to recall other things that make you grateful. And when you begin to realize all you have to be grateful for, that affects how you see your life and gives you inspiration to attain your goals. Okay, the fourth powerful habit I've been cultivating is creating an evening routine. Or actually, I should say following an evening routine. I've created one and now I'm actually following it. And while I'm still struggling to get up at a decent hour to create a consistent and effective morning routine, I have developed an evening routine that works well for me. Some people resist having a routine because they think it will hinder spontaneity and force them to be rigid in their schedules. In my opinion, though, it's certainly not anything super structured. I like to think of a routine as a guide to help me accomplish certain tasks. And since I've done this evening routine, since I've created it and have begun to follow it, I've discovered five benefits from having an evening routine. The first benefit is that it prepares me for the next day. 
when I look over my schedule for the next day, the night before, I can begin thinking through my day and anticipate any challenges that may arise. The second benefit is that it helps me to sleep better. Once I've assessed my schedule for the next day, I can put it out of my mind knowing that I'm aware of what needs to be done the next day. I sleep so much better when I don't have to worry about what I'm going to do tomorrow. The third benefit is that it creates a peaceful mood. My evening routine helps me to stay peaceful and in return allows my peaceful mood to spread through our home. When I'm not followed through with my routine, I end up being stressed out and that can be felt by my whole family. The fourth benefit is that it keeps the house cleaner. Doing a couple of chores at night before I go to bed helps me to stay on top of keeping my house clean. When everything is in its place, I have to spend less time cleaning later. And the fifth benefit is that it allows me to stay organized. When I pick up and put things away, I'm able to keep my home more organized. Just five minutes in the evening to put everything in its place can save a ton of time on busy mornings when everyone is trying to find what they need for the day. My evening routine consists of doing tasks that not only help me to get to bed earlier, but also help me to be prepared for the next day. Currently, my evening routine looks like um, at 9 o'clock, I um, make sure the kitchen is all cleaned up and run the dishwasher. I take my medications and check my calendar for the next day. If there's anything that needs to be thawed from the freezer for dinner for the next day, I do that. And then I pick up and put things away as best I can. Then at 9.20, I go back to my bedroom. I take off my makeup. I dress for bed. And if I'm got anywhere important I need to be the next day, I try to decide what I'm wearing the next day before I go to bed. At 9.30, I um, read my one-year chronological Bible, and I journal in my gratitude journal, and then I try to have the lights out by 10. I've added times to my routine to help me stay on task and get me in bed on time. If I don't get to sleep by 10 or shortly after, I have a much harder time getting up in the morning. You don't have to add times to your routine. Sometimes just having the steps and following them in order, you know, eventually developing that habit, then you'll know how long it's taking you to do certain things and you can tweak it if you feel like you're wasting some time in there. Um, But it just helped me to stay on task and to get me in bed when I need to be. And I have to admit that I don't always get started at nine. Um, Just like last night, I had dinner with some friends, and I didn't get home until about 9.30, and so I was delayed getting started. Um, And sometimes my husband and I may be up talking or I'm working on a project and not realize what time it is. But the goal of my evening routine is to set myself up for success for the next day by getting in bed on time. So if you don't have an evening routine, I would encourage you to start one as soon as possible. Um, I think it's one of the best routines, one of the best time management things you can do that you can see results and benefits from it immediately. All right, the last uh, powerful habit that I have been trying to cultivate is stick with your habits. Okay, I know it sounds strange to have a habit to stick with your habits. However, that's just what needs to happen if you want to see positive results with your habits. You have to make it a habit to stick with your habits. One great way to stick with your habits is to create routines. As I mentioned a minute ago, routines are just a series of habits that are put together to achieve a common goal. You can have routines for the morning, evening, when kids get home from school, cleaning, exercising, I mean, the list could go on and on for the kinds of routines that you could set up. So I encourage you to find ways to stick with your habits. A word of caution, though, don't try to start too many habits at once. Take one at a time until it's firmly established and then move on to working on another habit. I hope that um, after going through these five powerful habits that you can find one that speaks to you that... um, could help you to move forward with your goals, um, help you to be more productive, maybe give some peace to your life because you're 
can create a routine or habit that um, would just think, make things more peaceful or um, would help you to get more things done. So I would love to hear about your habits and work, what works for you and what's not going so well with those habits. So you can email me at theplanningwoman at gmail.com and let me know your thoughts on habits. Also, I'd love to connect with you on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash theplanningwoman. And you can also find me at Instagram at www.instagram.com slash theplanningwoman. Until next time, I hope that you have a great week.